Once again, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Rigo, and uh, welcome back to another episode of the Lifesavers channel on behalf of DKMS BMST, the foundation that is uh, helping a lot of people around the world and of late and quite recently in India, helping people with blood cancers to find a better way of life, to help find cures and, uh, well, making a big difference to uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people right across the globe. It is my pleasure today to have perhaps one of the, the best experts in this city, Bangalore, um, to tell us about the med medical aspects and the scientific aspects of uh, stem cell therapy. He happens to be a hemato-oncologist and also a stem cell transplant physician here in Bangalore. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Govind Erihat. Thank you, Mark. Welcome to the show, Dr. Um, Dr. Govind. Um, before we can get on to the technicalities, uh, would you like to just tell us a little bit about what you do? Because the sure. words that I just <laughs> use are very long, but if yeah. you could just yeah. tell sure. us in brief uh, yeah. what you do. So thank you for the introduction and the kind words. Um, I am a, a doctor of blood-related disorders, so I take care of blood and blood-related problems, uh, both cancerous and non-cancerous. Um, and uh, my interests are also in bone marrow transplantation, which Mark rightly christened as stem cell transplantation because uh, that's the newer nominal nomenclature now. So um, essentially, my job involves taking care of people, small kids and adults, uh, with respect to their um, blood-related problems, which could involve either very simple problems like anemia or less platelets or too many cells, too little cells, or something like clotting or bleeding problems, or something related to an infection. Low uh, RBC counts, yeah, things like that. Immunity-related problems, mm -hmm. autoimmune problems, or just maybe an infective consult in the ICU where I can help with infectious diseases okay. and managing antibiotics because in a certain subset like neutropenia, Okay. where uh, the bone marrow is not working very well, mm -hmm. uh, we help uh, in trying to manage the infections uh, with the treating primary team. So the essential forte is to try and uh, help patients with blood-related problems, but okay. my primary focus is stem cell transplantation. And this sounds, this sounds like such a wide gamut of uh, uh, illnesses and diseases that you mentioned, but how long have you been in this line, doctor? Uh, about 15 years now. So 15 years? Yeah. Wow, wow, that is it. Okay, can you tell us uh, something on this subject? Uh, what are the requirements for a person who wants to uh, donate their stem cells? Sure. So, um, before we get into this, I think we should try and tell them, or the listeners, as to what a stem cell is. Maybe okay, they'll okay. Get some right, let's start at the basics. Very okay. beginning. So, okay. um, all organs essentially come from a very primordial cell like when an ovum and a zy, you know, a sperm meet and you get a zygote, uh, these are embryonal stem cells. Okay. And these stem cells differentiate over time okay. with certain, you know, specific um, influences and stimuli to develop into specific organs. Okay. So these okay. are the embryonal stem cells. Okay. And this is outside the view of medical therapy because you've got to kill to get it. You have to take life. Okay. Because okay. The, there is life here. Right, right. So that's where the ethical issues come in. What we deal with is adult stem cells. Adult stem cells are different from embryonal stem cells. Okay. All of us have adult stem cells. Mm -hmm. Each of our organ system has stem cells, otherwise they would never regenerate. Okay. So if you're wondering when you got a cut, how did the skin come back? There are stem cells. So okay. every organ system has stem cells. Right. Some have a larger propensity for regeneration and some have very minimal propensity for regeneration. Okay. And um, their job in terms of taking care of things is both taking care of nurturing the organ system and replenishing it with more cells or, or more stem cells. So the, the beauty of the stem cell is it kind of doesn't obey the normal order of life. Mm -hmm. Wherein when you have a cell <clears throat> and the mother cell divides, you get two daughter cells, okay. which are representative of the mother. But the stem cell can turn into another stem cell if it wants, okay. which no other organism can, okay. I mean, no other, no other cell can in the body. Or, and this is called self-renewal. And the other right. thing is called plasticity. It can change into anything else depending on the need of the arm. Okay. So if in the bone marrow you need blood, it comes from a hemopoietic stem cell. All right. And this is sitting inside the cavity of the bone. 
Okay. No, the non vegetarians will appreciate the little marrow. paya soup. Yeah? <laughs> it's the, uh, the goat's marrow, which is supposed to be good for you, not so good for the goat. <laughs> so, uh, this stem cell is essentially what produces <clears throat> the okay. blood. So, mm-hmm. what you'd see in a blood test, the CBC, mm-hmm. hemoglobin, WBC, and platelets, these That's are all, all produced products there. Okay. from right. this factory. All right. Okay. And the bone marrow stem cell is like any other stem cell, mm-hmm. committed to making blood. Okay. Skin stem cell make skin. They yeah. don't go back and de-differentiate to okay. the, back to the embryo. So I like the word body. that you use, the, yeah. it's produced in this little factory. So yeah. basically what you're trying to say in the yeah. human body, there are different factories producing different kinds of yeah, stem cells. You'll be surprised because uh, what, what, what does anybody do when you go to a, a doctor with a headache or a toe pain or an infection? Uh, blood test. Mm-hmm. Why do you do a blood test if you have a headache? Why do you do a blood test if you have an infection? Why, do, why does the doctor want to Actually, say everything? Actually, I'm thinking blood? about it. Yeah, true. So, your, your, the truth about it is that the reason why you're alive and you're, you're able to wade off what you're doing is because there are people working for you constantly inside your body, taking care of your every need, making sure all the viruses, all the bacteria, all the other guys are down, making sure that when two cells divide, one doesn't go cancerous. It's a program error. Okay. You see that this cell is not working there. There are lymphocytes which come and kill. Cancer happens when this policing and surveillance stops. Correct. So immune surveillance, stopping cancer, making sure everything is going properly, making sure that you are not killing your own body. Mm -hmm. And these are all very primordial factors which come because of the blood. All right. And in many other diseases, for example, the problem is in the blood, but you get reflections elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So in autoimmune diseases, you might have seen like uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis. True. SLE. Uh, Jogren's disease, multiple sclerosis. These are all primarily blood related problems in the lymphocyte mm-hmm. attacking one's own body because it no longer recognizes you as his and therefore it destroys organ system. So it's like a, a reflection of a primary problem in the marrow okay. or in the blood which kind of causes. So the blood is actually very important in addition to just carrying oxygen and clotting stuff. This WBC segment there are a, a, a bazillion cells. things in that mm-hmm. and each of these guys do separate beautiful things. So th- so the stem cell, the way you think about it is that it's in plenty. So why do you need to take it out? Why doesn't the body just take care of the own problem? Sometimes over time, some patients can't. They don't have enough stem cells to take care of it. Or for some reasons like toxic injury, previous chemotherapies, radiation, occupational exposure, you'll be surprised. Or general ionizing radiations or somatic mutations you pick up in life. Okay. Right? So all these things kind of change. There are very few genetic things which really happen. So those are very different. Most of the cancers and everything that we pick up are um, essentially that you pick up overall in time Mm -hmm. with a lot of multifactorial influence. It's not just genetically coming in. So these stem cells can be harvested very easily. Um, and that would probably come back to your question about how and what is the eligibility. So this stem cell is important, so that it can be used in, in a manner to repopulate somebody's diseased marrow again. So basically what you're trying to tell, tell us, doctor, is, if, if I could put it in baby language, is you're going to extract these stem cells mm-hmm. from a healthy person yeah. and retransplant them into another person's body to help him regenerate your cells or boost, yeah. in, boost the healing process? I'm sorry. No, that's, that's absolutely clarify. right. Uh, from a very ballpark perspective, that's it. This field doesn't make any grice. Okay. We need to get new seeds to put here so okay. that this field okay. will grow again. Okay. These seeds are dead. Okay. So there is some kind of diseases where the seeds are just dead. Mm-hmm. You just need new seeds and replow the whole thing. Okay. So that's an allogenic bone marrow transplant. Okay. You bring in another donor mm-hmm. who is HLA matched and um, as close a match as possible. We will talk about HLA, I suppose. But the other types of diseases where we don't need somebody else's blood. There are some autologous transplants like in myeloma and lymphoma, okay. where we can give you chemotherapy, treat you, and once your marrow is clear of the disease, we can use your own marrow and give it back to you. Oh, that's so that's autologous transplant. So the, it's a completely different thing because here we are not going to have rejection because it's your own it's cells. It's your own cells, yeah. yeah, and your body is used yeah. to it. But when you, when you have a donor, you have to make sure that they're matched. matched. And that's where the HLA comes in. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what would you actually say or uh, how stem cell therapy works on a patient? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what are the pros and if there are any cons? 
Just give us a very brief very description. Brief description yeah. If you can uh, give it to us in simpler terms, because I think you're you're doing it beautifully. I'm sure that there are a lot of our viewers who would not understand these medical terms, but I think you're giving us a very nice. Okay, I'll try and explain this. Um, so, uh, think of it like as a graft that is going into a, a new field. Okay. Right. So, uh, there is an HLA match. which is like a blood group but okay. more complicated okay. you need to have 12 points and prefer be all 12 should be matching only then we accept the donor okay. in addition to some more eligibilities mm-hmm. like you shouldn't have cancer and you shouldn't be having actively you know suppressive diseases other issues uh, but once uh, we can um, you know uh, collect uh, the uh, stem cells uh, and make sure that they are identical by hla then we reinfuse this back into the patient patient okay and before that like we clean up a, a field before we start we give the patient some chemotherapy mm-hmm. and that makes him completely inert and his bone marrow shuts down okay these kind of doses once you give the patient is not coming back okay so these stem cells better be good okay okay right? okay yeah. so it's a huge risk it's actually. a huge risk so once the condition huge is huge risk over, for the patient absolutely not yeah. is it for the donor in not any way not for the donor at all okay. so i'll take the stem cell collection up a bit so okay. once the stem cell goes in essentially the stem cell will repopulate the patient's old marrow mm-hmm. after it's dead and make new cells that will kill both the cancer and the other infective problems which are existing in the patient so that's how it works okay but sometimes things happen wherein the the stem cells can also affect the host badly Okay. And that's a small risk which we need to keep looking at. Hence, the match between HLA is very important. It's very, very important. The more the mismatch, most the chance of the host getting injured. We don't want that. All right. So tell us something about this uh, the GCSF injection that you give a yeah. recipient before. What exactly is that injection for? Yeah. So these stem cells are like ready to move out of the marrow. Their job is to be connected to the marrow, mm-hmm. the inner surface of the bone. Okay. Right. and they connected like lock and keys to through proteins and these proteins are basically cleaved by molecular scissors okay and this gcsf stands for granulocyte colony stimulating factor oh okay right mm-hmm. and this injection is given to you by the into the skin mm-hmm. and what it does it goes and cuts these stem cells and makes certain neutrophils produce some enzymes and cuts this out and sends them into the blood okay so that's why we give them the gcsf so that the stem cells can move from the marrow to the blood so we can easily collect them by a simple blood donation technique we don't need to go to the marrow anymore and that's interesting that's really yeah. interesting all right another pretty important <clears throat> question is um uh, why is it so important to register people who are potential donors of stem cells yeah. of different ethnicities that's a great question so for you to be an hla identical to somebody else it largely matters who you are where you come from okay. and who are your parents and what's been your endogenous profile of ethnicity Okay. So the chance of you being a Tamilian or a South Indian finding a match among the same race is easier. Oh, okay. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Of course, you might have somebody unrelated across in Poland or Romania, but that's sheer chance. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're trying to do by making everybody a donor. Okay. More in the registry, then more people we can find for a match. But uh, in ethnicity, what happens is there are there are about twelve points we look at. and um, these are called hla abc okay. and dp dq tr these are class a proteins and these are minor proteins and these basically decide how your cells will interact with the next foreign thing that comes okay okay right okay. so these six combinations are ethnically conserved mm-hmm. so a tibetan lama is likely to find somebody in tibet Okay. Somebody in Kerala is more likely to find somebody here. Somebody in Nigeria is more likely to find an African. We just have to make that happen. All right, and that is where that DKMS comes. That's Absolutely. where DKMS comes in. All right. Um, so, who, who, in your opinion, is eligible? Okay, to register or to yeah. even, for that matter, at a later stage, be eligible to donate the the stem cells. Yeah. So. I'll speak about this from two points of view. One, one is the fact that um, when we do an allogeneic transplant, mm-hmm. the first thing we look for is a sibling match. Okay. Right. So, so when a, we a brother, sister, brother, or a sister, close relative yeah, kind of thing. So okay. the there's a twenty five percent chance that you might find a transplant match if you have four siblings. So wow. We, we could find that when you know our probably our parents are eight. Yeah, yeah I've got five and brothers and sisters. Very <laughs> easy. You can find a transplant match. I mean, there's okay. a good chance. Good chance, but. Uh, the sheer chance of this is less when you don't have in you know, the nuclear families you don't have 
uh, that kind of support groups. Mm. So uh, that's that's where this comes in. So if you can't find a sibling match, mm -hmm. then we look for an unrelated match. Okay. And that's when you need somebody else. Mm. And uh, we look around in these registries. So there are a lot of registries which do this and DKM is probably one of the world's largest registries, which has a, an imprint across the globe and uh, they have you have a large chance of finding uh, a, a donor uh, mm -hmm. if you have a larger pool. Okay. It's, I mean, sheer numbers, that's basically it. And the shocking part is this, that for all the billions that are here, we don't even donate blood. Fact. Fact. What are you talking about stem cells? Stem cells. We are ethnically people who don't want to do unless it comes to you. Correct. How many blood donors do you know who actually go out and, I mean, you got blood, what's the problem? Go give it. And if you can give blood, you can give stem cells. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So it's about a mindset change that no harm will come to you. You know that already for blood transfusion, no harm is going to come, yet you don't go give it. Right? So I think we need to think about that. So start going and thinking about these opportunities where you can. So if we can find a donor in the unrelated donor segment, then there are some eligibility criteria. So if you're a sibling and you have diabetes, I will take you. For a 12 on 12 match, your diabetes is immaterial to me. Oh, is that so? It's simple as that. Okay. Right? However, you're an unrelated donor, then you want to be a little more terse. You want to make sure that the eligibility is a little more strong because there are legalities involved in making sure the right person was found. He didn't have HIV, he didn't have other problems, syphilis, all the other. Because here now, the stem cell is all you. This is going to be the new person. True. I'll give you an analogy. If I have cancer and you are a girl and you are the match and you give me all your stem cells, after this, genetically, my body is going to be... If I drop blood, they'll find a girl's blood there. This okay. is why a lot of murder movies are kind of based around that. Mm -hmm. So you are identically being changed inside, not your phenotype, not the okay. outside, but your cells are that person's. Okay, okay. Yeah? So it has to constantly work with you and not cause you harm. Okay. So finding that HLA match mm. is so critical because otherwise the stem cells will do more harm to the patient. So here's okay. what's happening. You have... Uh, cancer at one end and you have the patient at one end mm -hmm. and you have a stem cell. It is dissimilar to both and that is what we are trying to use. Okay. So this is called the graft or the donor. This against leukemia is graft versus leukemia effect and okay. this versus host is graft versus host disease. Okay. You want to have minimal graft versus host disease so the match has to be perfect. It has to look as good like this. Okay. So this is different, I'll go hit him. Mm -hmm. But the minimal difference is also Despite being a 12 on 12 match, mm -hmm. you could have some kind of graft versus host disease. All right. Another question I'm sure a lot of people would uh, want to know about is uh, considering if they even want to register number one or yeah. even perhaps be a donor in the future. Are there any side effects for yeah. uh, stem cell donation? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I, I want to be, um, uh, I'm going to start from the beginning about things they should know in order to come out and be a donor. Step one, it, it's not an invasive procedure. All you need to do is take a swab, put it in your cheek, take the loose tissue out, put it back. Uh, we will, if you can go up on the net, the DKMS is there and you can put in your eligibilities and we'll send you a postage, uh, pre-filled return envelope addressed with a swab. All you gotta do is take Just some time rub out, it in. rub it in, put it in, send it, it's paid for. No pain, nothing. Nothing, nothing. And if you figure it out that, you know, that you, everything's done within about 12 weeks, you will have an answer saying that you're all fine and the anonymity and all the disclosures that are necessary for taking care of WMD and other IT technology related, act related problems in terms of legality of these issues mm -hmm. of information have all been taken care of here. You're basically a number set. That's it. If you ever match with somebody tomorrow, day after 20 years from now, you will get a call. Hey, it looks like you're a match with somebody. Do you want to go ahead? There is no compulsion to go ahead. Okay, if you so want they ask, to. You, ask your permission. Absolutely. If, if you yeah. want to do yeah, it, yeah, if yeah. you don't want to do it. Yeah, you can back out. Okay. But here's what, you don't need to because it's so simple that it's, it's such an easy procedure. If you can give blood, you can do this. The only difference is we put some GCSF shots in it and that's about it. So the rest of the process is as simple as giving platelets or you know blood is as simple as that. It's just a procedure it takes about four hours. We give you a couple of injections into the skin. You go and sit there, a vein, put a needle, it goes into a machine. We just take the take stem out cells. Only the stem cells? Just the stem cells. And the rest of the blood goes back I into mean, your body. If you body. can take RBCs and platelets separately, what's the big deal with stem cells? Correct. It's a new cassette. 
It's just a, it's a gating depending on electronic charge. So we look for CD34, those are stem cells, we take them out. It's an anticlimax, eventually it looks like a little bag, just this much. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're done, yeah, you're done. So either you do it for a day if you don't get enough, usually most people get just a day. And uh, there are some, if the colony stimulating factor is working, generally some pain is experienced because the marrow is expanding. Okay, when you say pain, what kind of pain? Little flu-like. Uh, like a body ache? Body ache, okay. which is amenable nothing to paracetamol. No, nothing else, but this will happen. It's a good indication. You're about to give them good cells. Oh, so yeah. that's a good sign if you ha if you do Absolutely. get a slight body ache. Absolutely, or something. yeah, because the marrow is expanding. You're going to give them goodies. The stem cells are coming out. How beautifully you put it across. So if you, and that's it, then you just put it on a needle, take it and then bye-bye, you're gone. It's very safe, nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. And long term, these cells, the hem these stem cells will probably regenerate in four to six weeks. You'll be absolutely fine. It's like... Absolutely normal. Absolutely. Nothing. Statistically, there is a 1% chance of a splenic rupture. Okay? Mm -hmm. With GCSF. Statistically, there is a 5% chance that paracetamol that you're taking for pain can cause you anaphylaxis and you die. <laughs> So, I mean, if you want to go with that and you're going to open up each of these side effects and choose one that finds your fancy, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't take anything. Nothing is without consequence. The okay. question is risk, benefit. True. What are you doing? And keep the patient informed about both these things. Right? So, we don't, when a donor's um, in Germany and all these places, they play a lot of active sport, rugby and football. So, we tell them, please don't play this while you're taking injections because if somebody punches you there, we don't want you having a, right? So, oh, okay. They are very simple things, but again in India, none of us are going to do anything like that. Yeah. We're just sitting at home most mm. of the time, so we don't need these things. But there, there are specific things we do tell them. But absolutely nothing. You can do this every year if you want. Seriously? Yeah. You're actually saying what you're telling us on camera is, yeah. uh, if you're a donor today, next yeah. year you could, you could no, read you date, provided, <laughs> pro, provided you get absolutely. the right match. Yeah, it I, can I have, be done. I have page donor, of course, you know them after time, after the legality clauses have ended, but there are, patients, there are donors who have been actually identical, unfortunately, to multiple people. Oh. And they've been donors for all of them. So the idea is that, in fact, there are some scenarios where we've done this. Um, I, I think there's a worst case scenario that was done uh, one this year and one the next year. He got a call twice. I mean, wow, great. And he got to be Superman two times while he's still alive. And the best part is when you meet that person who got your cells after a couple of years and you get to, you know, what, what the impact you've had for that family. You've saved his life. Not just his life, you've changed the entire family's mindset, their, their entire socio-economic systems changed. You mentioned a little earlier how important it is that people of the same ethnicity come forward and either register or, you know, even become potential donors later. Uh, we're going to end with this now. So could you just give all our listeners your perspective or a little message as to how we together, along with DKMS, come together, register, and yeah. you know, perhaps we could be lifesavers. Absolutely. Who knows? I think each, each one of us has a unique HLA, and this must be something that you should be aware of, that there, is, there are probably people around there who need this, and you could be a lifesaver. It's probably the only kind of organ that you can give. Actually, it is the only organ that you can give while you're still alive, and it will come back to you. Nothing's going away, just, just, you just bless somebody with life. So I think that's probably the best thing that you can take away from this is that you're not going to have any harm. You're going to really help somebody else out, maybe multiple times over. And um, it's so simple and some completely safe. So just get online and try and see where you can um, get a little cheek swap and send us your HLA so you can all get there and try and help somebody out because you never know, you never know, maybe you'll get a call in 10 years, 20 years, but who's to say? But that's the least we can do. Absolutely. Be Superman while you're still alive. Don't wait to die and get your liver and kidney. That too is fine, but do this now. There are people waiting. I like those words. Be Superman while you're alive. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Govind, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for answering so many unanswered questions or queries people may have, may have had in such a simple uh, way. Uh, but we're going to end with this message, as doctor said earlier. Please come forward, ladies and gentlemen. Come forward, at least register with DKMS. We, we are putting our website down at the bottom over there. You never know. You could be the next one saving a life or gifting life to someone else. Be a Superman today while you're still alive. Thank you very much. Until our next podcast, from myself, Mark Rigo, and Dr. Govind, 
We'll see you again. Bye-bye.